Hey everybody, Mike with Games Played Badly, and it's been a minute. Um, we did the whole Gen Con thing, which I'm sure everybody knows about now, uh, and that was a lot of fun. And then we came back, and it was my big 5-0, so we had a whole week of stuff that we were doing, and I didn't have a lot of time to shoot any video. video. But I wanted to go through and do this one specifically because we've had so much fun with this. Um, while we were at Gen Con... We found some games that we absolutely fell in love with. And one of them was not a Gen Con game. One of them was an actual birthday present to my husband from our dear friend Susie. And she, uh, I can't believe how good the game is. It's, it's Dungeon Mayhem. Can you see that? There we go. Dungeon Mayhem. Now, uh, this is a card game. This little box holds four uh, characters that you can play against each other. The game takes about 10 minutes to play. It's super, super easy, super, uh, super fun. Replayability is very high. Uh, what you're going to attack each other, uh, and obviously the last person standing wins. And the fun thing about this is there are no interrupts. Uh, there are no cards that you're playing out of your turn for the most part. It's all straight. Here's damage. Take it. Move on. You can have shields and things like that to kind of help. You can heal yourself, obviously, but every character is assuming some sort of class within uh, D and D, and it's a lot of fun. We've had a great time with it. If you get a chance, it's super inexpensive. Pick it up. We actually went through, and we have a much bigger box now. It's probably about that big um, of an expansion. So now we have like ten or fifteen characters we can play. So it's been a lot of fun. Check it out. I think if you're if you want something to play around the table real quickly, or you have kids and you want to play with them, or whatever, uh, it is a great investment because again, it's inexpensive, it's fast to play, and it's a lot of fun. Now, this game uh, you've heard me mention several times uh, on the channel or in tweets or wherever you get my content, but this one is a game. Um, I believe it's Capstone Games, Wandering Towers. Now, this is a great game. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with it. We've played it probably, uh, I don't know, seven or eight times now. It is a quick game for the most part. <clears throat> Relatively easy to play. And I will show you how easy it is to play. So basically the way the game is played is you are playing as a wizard. And you have multiple wizard tokens on the board. They're meeples. And your job is to get them in this tower to win the game. Now... Also, you are taking these smaller towers and you're moving them around the board. Now, these towers can not only rest on the board, but they can stack on top of each other. If you use one of these towers to cover up somebody else's wizard, they effectively can't use that wizard. So it gets very strategic very quickly. And the other thing is, if you're playing a game and you can't remember where your meeple is in the tower, let's say you have four or five of them stacked up, it's a memory game, too. So you've got to figure out what tower to move to expose your wizard so that way you can move them. If you cover up somebody's wizard, you have potions. You have five of those. You flip them over. They start empty. You flip them over. And that is part of your win condition. So these potions, as you flip them over, are part of the win condition. So you get all of your meeples in the tower, and however many, uh, like, let's say there's a tie, whoever has the most potions exposed and usable uh, wins the game. Now, when I say usable, these actually get used throughout the game. You can use them, I should say. There are some random spells that are on the board that you can use to further or hinder people's progress. When you use them, these are out of the game, and there's only five of them. So if you get rid of all of them and you tie with somebody, the person who has the most uh, full potions wins the game. So it's actually a really easy game to play. It's wonderfully built. Uh, these towers are really awesome. You can see the bottom is hollow. Um, and uh, they stack on top of each other real well. The box is well laid out. It actually has individual bins for each one of the towers and things like that. So we've really enjoyed the game. This is, again, from Capstone Games. Take a look at that. It is absolutely our favorite game of Gen Con. We played a whole bunch of other ones. Um, there is a uh, one called Tiger and Dragon, I think, which is basically it's a tile game. 
Very, very easy. We had a lot of fun with that, but it was not available at Gen Con. We could play it, but you couldn't buy it. Um, and always, we have our regular games that we love to play. Uh, Dice Throne is one of them. Dice Miner is another one, which is a really good one. Um, if you take a look at any of those games, I think I've done videos on them before. Take a look at those and see if you can find them and see if you want to play them. So I just wanted to come on and talk about these games real quick because I haven't talked to you in so long. So uh, more interviews are coming up and a couple other videos are being shot right now. So I can't wait for you to see those. If you like this content, please hit the subscribe button and hit that thumbs up. Talk to you soon.